Hello everybody, uh, this is Bill from AT Makers, and I have an off-topic video for you today. Um, I saw a conversation on the Adafruit, um, on the Adafruit uh, chat server, the Discord server, about various uh, text editors and what people like. And I've been using the same one for many, many years, and I wanted to, I came across a situation that shows exactly why I use it, and I thought I'd go ahead and show it. I use Emacs. Uh, this is GNU Emacs. There's also X Emacs and a Windows version of Emacs. Basically, Emacs is Emacs. Um, uh, the keystrokes are kind of complicated. It can take you a little bit of time to get used to it. Uh, so a lot of people kind of pick on it a little bit. But it does some amazing things that will save you just tons and tons of time. And this is a great example right here. And I thought I'd go ahead and show it. Uh, let people uh, know why some of us who've programmed a long time uh, use it. So on the right-hand side here, you'll see a list of what I, I want to get to. Uh, so I'm actually updating the translation list translation list for Google Translate on the right-hand side. You'll see that it needs to be in a structure that says option value equals and then the, the uh, language code and then the name and then a closing option tag. Well, there's 103 of these. And um, there is no place where you can go to Google and just say, give me an option list. They should, but they don't have that. What they do have is basically a list you can you can copy and paste from their website. And so that's over here on the left-hand side. And there's a, a couple problems with it. One is it's in the wrong order. Uh, the second is that um, it's got these extra texts in here. And so it'll take you a long time to convert the list on the left into the list on the right manually. But Emacs makes this very, very easy. So I thought I'd walk through uh, how I do this, uh, how you would do this. So Emacs has a tool called Keyboard Macros. Uh, and if you type Control X, open parentheses, uh, you'll see that down here on the bottom left, it says defining keyboard macro. And then I'm going to walk through the macro that I would use to convert one to the other. And you'll notice that uh, it may take me a couple tries to get this right. But once I get the macro recorded, I will then just run it for all the lines. So the first thing I'm going to do in my macro is I'm going to uh, take a mark. That means hit uh, control space. And that will start um, marking uh, an area to copy. I'm going to go to the end of the line, uh, control E. I'm going to go back one word. Because if you look carefully, um, all of the language codes are one word. And then I'm going to hit control W to remove, to copy that first word out. So that's in a copy buffer. It's ready for us to use later, which we're going to need in a second. Now I'll type uh, option value equals, open quote, go to the end of the line, close quote, close bracket. And now I'm going to hit control Y to yank or paste that, um, that text back here. You'll see that there's some extra space there. It actually wouldn't cause me any harm uh, because of the way HTML works. Uh, but just to, to use good form, uh, there's a great tool in Emacs called Fix Up White Space. So I can use uh, Alt X, Fix Up, and then it'll, it'll complete that. And that just removed all the extra white space at the end. I type slash option. I hit next line, go to the beginning so that I'm ready to run this macro again. And then I hit Control X, close parentheses, and you'll see at the bottom it says keyboard macro defined. Now, it seems like a lot of work, but what's neat is if I hit control X E, it will convert the next line and the next line. And if I say uh, escape 500, control X E, that will repeat that command 500 times. And I just completed my list. Now, you'll see that at the end here, the very last one very often is messed up, so I have to clean that up. But you'll see I now have this entire list converted. You want to go in here. Uh, these ones with the parentheses, it looks like. Um, yeah, they didn't quite come in right because the ZH dash should be here. That's fine. Uh, you know, fixing up one or two lines like this is much easier than editing the entire list. So we'll go through, double check them all. These all look fine. And my list is done. 
So this is just a really good example of one of the many things that, that Emacs does. It looks like the CEB got an extra space. There you go. Um, one of the one of the things that Emacs does really well. It also you can embed a debugger in it, uh, GDB. You can uh, you can have obviously multiple windows open inside of it, and it works on like everything. So I'm running it on on Linux right here. Uh, it looks exactly the same on Windows. It's the same keystrokes, and once you've trained yourself on them, they are um, they're not they're not hard to use. So. If anybody wants to try, there's lots of good uh, videos and stuff on getting started with Emacs. Uh, this is more just a matter of uh, kind of why do I use it? Somebody asked me, why do you always use Emacs? Uh, I do notice that Lamore uses Emacs as well. Um, a bunch of people use VI. That's great. A lot of people use Text Plus, uh, Notepad++, Plus Plus, which um, I, I use it when I'm on Windows and I don't have this installed. But I thought it was a, an interesting way to show how a, a really good editor can can save you a ton of time so uh, you guys have a great weekend and uh, i'll talk to you later in the week